It's a 16 buff in the dark of the <laughs> Uh, good morning, guys. Good morning to our viewers. Good evening to uh, all of you in the world. I certainly hope that you are actually having a more wonderful day so far. And we actually have a special, special episode today um, because uh, we're not have we don't have a guest locally, but we do have a guest in the states and. I know that he is quite popular here in the Philippines. There's no introduction needed. We actually have um, Mr. Cholo Ononevo on the show. So Cholo, uh, thank you for accepting our invitation. And let me just introduce myself first. Again, guys, you already know me. I'm Rain, your ultimate Bolero from Bolero's Lifestyle. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being here. Yes, and thank you, Charlie, and I am D Sports TV. And uh, I'm Kino uh, from the sideline. Good morning. Good morning to you guys. And we also have um, from East West Private our very, very special guest, and we are honored to also have her, Miss Patty Scott uh, from East West Private. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Thank you so much for ha uh, accepting our invitation as well. Good morning to you all, both Rain, Dom, and Hino. Thank you for having us, and we appreciate that you're so focused on uh, getting to know Cho a little bit more today, and um, we're very honored, so we really do appreciate all three of you. For sure, for sure. So um, let's get into it. So first and foremost, Solo, how are you doing during this pandemic? I'm doing good. Uh, just got the vaccine and staying safe here, wearing a mask, sanitizing. That's it. Awesome, awesome. And I hope you stay safe and sound, even though you're vaccinated already. It's better to yeah. be safe, safe than sorry, right? Um, you know let's go back uh, first from the beginning. Uh, how did you start playing basketball and when did you fell in love with the game? Uh, when I was younger, I always played like go to sports. Like I played soccer and like hockey in like a normal primary school there in Ireland. And then I just played basketball too and I just fell in love with it instantly. It was just like it was more fun to me than other any other sports. Wonderful. So um you started out uh, playing soccer so that's where the agility came from right yeah but i wasn't like an outfield i was like goalkeeper all right all right so that's uh where you practice your reflexes and um can you please tell us about your journey from ireland then going into the philippines how did you go here and how did they how as we all know, as our viewers know, you are from the FAU Baby Tamaraus. How did you actually go to um, the FAU Baby Tamaraus? Uh, when I was in Ireland, I, was re I wasn't really thinking about the Philippines. But when I was there, I was working. I was training with my club team. And they, my coach there told me to try out for the national team. And I did. And... Oh, uh, we, we I made it to the top fifteen, and then I got cut because they needed twelve players for the national team. And then I, my mom was talking to me about all the other options I could have in the Philippines, and like we are really close with Coach Nash. Like he's like one of our, he's like really close to our family. He's like a tita to me and Coach Olsen. So he told he like helped us get a tryout with the baby Tams with Coach Allen, and then me and my brother flew around. Me, me and my brother flew to our uh, to Philippines 
for three three weeks, and I trained with the baby Tams for like a week, and I liked it. And then I came back to Ireland, finished my year there, and said goodbyes to my friends. All right, so that's actually a great story. It's uh, a lesson learned for our viewers. So basically, even though adversities would actually make us stronger, and if ever one door closes, another window will open, and that's the path of Mr. Chol Cholo Nuevo, where that's why he actually went into the FEU Tamara, baby Tamara house, and um, as a survivor, it's actually a great lesson for to our viewers. Hi, Cholo. Uh, now you're in the EWP stable. How the East West Private changed your basketball career? Um, they changed it because they gave me more opportunities and like there's so many doors for me to open and to explore here. Like there's a lot of other colleges I can choose from. There's overseas I could go to. There's just a lot of opportunities they gave me and like right now, it's locked down there in the Philippines and there's like no UAP season. And I'm so grateful that they just gave me this opportunity so I could still do what I love and at a high level. And uh, speaking of uh, East West Private, I have a question uh, to Miss Patty. Uh, Miss Patty, aside from Kai and uh, Cholo, we have lots of young and potential basketball players here in the Philippines. How the East West Private select the players to train with the EWP? Uh, you know, that's a great question. Um, we focus on actually several criteria. It's not just what's on the court, it's also what's inside the heart and what's, uh, you know, in their mind, both mentally and physically, you know. It's one thing to have skill and will, right? Um, and high basketball IQ, and you can't teach height, right? So all of that is just a part of what it is. But at the end of the day, it, it's like, what's your attitude, right? What, what do you want to do with your life um, besides basketball, right? Like, are you giving back to your community? Are you you know, where are you wanting to go with things? So it, it's drive and, and actual mental toughness to us is much more important at times than physical, right? The basketball skills for most successful athletes um, or even outside of basketball, whether it's, you know, hockey, soccer, weightlifting, um, track, you know, most have honed their skill extremely well. Can they take it to another level? Absolutely. You know, everybody can always take their skill to another level. But more importantly, do they have the mental fortitude to want to do it? And not just do it part way, but really grind, giving it everything that they have. And then some on top of that. It, it's tough. I mean, Chola will tell you in a day's period of time, like, you know, there are days that your body physically doesn't think it's going to make it, but you mentally have to be strong and want to carry on. Not need to carry on, but want to carry on. Yes, thank you for that, uh, Miss Patty. My next question is for Cholo. Um, you already shared your journey from Ireland to Philippines. And now we would like to know your journey from Philippines to Ireland. Are there any hard... Um, Rather, P P uh, Philippines to U.S., are there any hardships during the journey and how did you deal with them? Uh, every, every journey you always have, um, there's always a challenge. And for me, the challenge was being here alone in this pandemic. And with Tita P and Tita Chow's help, they opened up and treated me as family right away. And it was really... It wasn't, I wouldn't say it was easy, but it wasn't hard. It was, it wasn't easy to, it was like in somewhere in the middle because you, there's some parts of me that I, I, of course I miss my family as well. Haven't seen them for a while, 
and this pandemic is just it was really good and um in the philippines from us it was like it was really tough cuz i didn't even know if i was going to go with the travel situations and all it was just really tough with everything so there was a lot of challenges going towards here Yeah, and maybe even though you're away from your family, you have your own family there with East West Private. Yeah. My next question is: You played as a forward in the Philippines, uh, not entirely sure in Ireland, but as of the moment, what is your um, official height and your usual playing position in the US? And uh, which are which position are you most comfortable with? Um, um, I play at Don Prep. I play the point guard, and I'm currently six five. So are you and, comfortable playing for uh, point guard? Uh coach Sammy gave me a lot of confidence and he gave me the like he gave me confidence to play the point guard and he taught me a lot cuz he he was a point guard himself when he played. He gave me a lot of tips and I I'm comf- I'm comfortable playing like a combo guard. I could play the two sometimes, but if I need to play the one, I could play the one. And that's it. Yeah, thank you for that. And I know skills wise is actually uh, this is a question for you. Skills wise is you you definitely have the skills and the talent. Now with regard to um, playing uh, the point guard position in the states, uh, what other areas would you like to improve on? Uh, right now I've been improving. Mostly every every part of my game, but really the mentality, like the way I look at the game more, and like I I know that we there's always like physical ability, like you have to work on that, but no one really works on your mental, like you have to like your confidence and all your like how you approach the game. That's that's what I'm working on right now, and that's what East West and my trainers are helping me with that's terrific that is actually confidence is the name of the game and it all boils down to mentality and but plus you do we can see that you do have the attitude to um, develop into uh, the the potential that you have with regard to uh, playing basketball this is actually a question for uh, miss patty where did this this advocacy of uh, developing players holistically came from Well, you know, we take a very different approach, unlike um, I think others in the industry. I mean, we've <laughs> we've been uh, very fortunate to work with some pretty incredible professionals, um, from Kobe to Kevin Durant. But you know, obviously, when we brought the Ultimate All Stars over, and you know, we were able to forge relationships and understand very early on that the game is not just physical right it's about confidence and it's about being um smart but also there's a difference between being smart and being mentally confident and not being exhausted mentally and physically and in order to do that you have to have a balance and in order to have a balance you really need to understand who you are you need to be able to admit what your strengths are and know what you need to do to to even make those strengths greater but you also need to accept where your weaknesses are and accept that some of those might not ever be where they need to be but know of the weaknesses what you can add to the repertoire to make it even greater and um Also having a tight inner circle is important. You know, not having everybody around you that compliments you all the time and lets you hear what they think you want to hear, but having a very tight inner circle that's honest and really gives honest feedback um but in a trusting way. And um I I think that in life, right? Whether you're an athlete, whether you're an entrepreneur, um you know whether you're an artist i think that's what we all want in life right is to have balance to have clarity 
to have trust, to have a strong inner circle, and to perform at the highest um, level in whatever your talent that God gave you. Definitely a 100% on point, ma'am. Thank you so much for that point of view. And we are all learning throughout this conversation. And Kino? Uh, I have a question, uh, Tucholo. Uh, last year, you received an offer from uh, Tennessee State, a US NCAA Division I school. What does that mean for you? I was really shocked. It was like my first month here. And I was. it was very, like, I was honored from... I was honored to receive the uh, the offer from Coach Penny of TSU. It was like all of a sudden. Now, uh, almost a year now after that, uh, aside from TSU, have you received other offer from other school? I've, I've received an offer and I've been talking to a lot of different colleges. I'm just waiting to choose the right college and to see if I can like if, to see if they can take me on a visit or something soon I'm just waiting how about how about, how about uh, playing college basketball here in the Philippines uh, I'm not thinking about that right now because that's where I came from and I'm trying to I'm trying to make everything here first and then I know, I know that's there, but I'm still here, so I'm trying to figure things out here first. So that's not really one of my options right now. Um, Cholo, let's talk about your basketball goals. So what are your goals right now, and do you think that NBA G League is also an option for you? Uh, my goals right now is to try uh, to to make it D one and I G League G League is one of the options. It's still we don't know yet. It's still a question mark. So like I'm open to it and I'm open to anything. It's just I'm still weighing down my options with the colleges. So I, I think in the U.S. it's very po popular that uh, they will announce the school and then they will wear a hat. So do we expect the same thing? Uh, I think so. Yeah, pretty pretty yeah. soon. We're, we're excited about that. And rearing for uh, coming from the Philippines, uh, what can you say about the competition, uh, Cholo, with regard to? Um, the competition here in the Philippines and the states. What are the biggest similar similarities and differences to uh, for the the game? The similarities are the players are very skilled in both areas. They're both skilled, and it's just the difference is um, here in the U.S. It's their mentality and their athleticism. Like they're really big. They're fast. Their height. Like in the Philippines, we only had like a few tall players like Tamayo, Kai, uh, Kiambao. This is just a few, but here they're all tall. They're all big. You got to, it's just, a, you have to wait, like you have to attack a different way. You got to think in a different way here. And their mentality is like, if that, if you, if you're not confident about yourself, it's just, they'll just pull you down. That's it. All right. And in addition, uh, what do you think is your advantage over other players there in the U.S., especially if they're going to recruit you? Why will they take you in their team? Uh, it's because I just – I'm one of the hardest workers here, and I just uh, I just feel like I'll outwork anyone if I, if I try, and I can do it at any time. And uh, I can do anything for the team, like – I can play defense. I could guard the best player on their team. I could, I could set up my teammates. I could get a bucket. It's just, it's just whatever the coach wants or the team needs. I'll just do it. I'll sacrifice anything for the team. 
Thank you for that. And it's actually great to hear uh, this from a young one that ha- hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. It's I actually That's have true. an... I actually have an additional question for Miss Patty. How do you actually assess the uh, talents here in the Philippines compared to the United States? Can can we does the Philippines have enough talent to succeed abroad, or the Filipinos have enough talent to succeed abroad? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I would want nothing more. You know, my I know uh, Tita Chow and myself stream is. We ask all the time for teams to come over here to the States and compete. Um, We would love for them to train here. We'd love for them to compete here, both as universities as well as the national team. Um, It would be fun. It would be, um, you know, obviously if we go back and take us back to when we did the Ultimate All-Star event and 2011 and you think about all those all-stars that were you know playing against the national team as well as the all-star team and I can remember Derek Fisher and Chris Paul and all of them talking about how uh surprised in a good way that how competitive the players were so I think that um there's no question that the Filipino teams could absolutely compete. I mean, yes, the pace of play is fast, and but again, it's it's mental, it's competitiveness, it's um, you know everything that I think they could all compete with at a very high level um, if coached at that high level as well. I think coaching is just as important as the players and the team. Um, I think everybody needs to to be at that that high level in order, you know, to be competitive. Kino, I think you're on mute. Uh, I have a follow-up question to Ms. Patty. Uh, Aside from a young bowler prospect here in the Philippines, is it possible that some of our skilled professional basketball players with the age of uh, 25 to 30s and hoping to get a shot to play overseas and still sign with the EWP. Example, Terence Romeo, Kiefer Abena, Ray Parks Jr. Is it possible, Mom? Well, anything is always possible. I mean, we're always open to conversations. Um, we're always open to talking with players, understanding what their dreams and goals are. And again, as I said earlier, you know, we're very honest. Like, we're going to be truthful we're going to ask questions and we're not going to lead someone on so can't really get specific unless you know but but individually speaking um just like with cholo you know he's very clear on what his options are and um we hope to be there to guide to help him make the best decisions both for him and his family um but every conversation is different Thank you, Miss Patty. And uh, to Cholo, uh, lots of Pinoy basketball fans waiting for this. When we will see Cholo Anonuevo playing uh, with Aquila's jersey? I hope soon. Uh, I'm just waiting for my big call up, and I know I'll just be ready. I'm just waiting as well. These sports. So, actually, uh, I saw some posts from our fellow content creator, Bologna Basketball Playground, quoting you that one of your dreams is to play for Gilas Pilipinas and it will be an honor to play for the country. I'm sure that you are in the radar of SBP. Did anyone from Samang Basketball na Pilipinas contacted you already or still waiting for the call? I think they're talking with Tita Chow and Tita P about it. So they're trying to fix things up with the pandemic there and like the lockdown situations. So, okay, so yeah. So it's yeah. probably with the uh, East West Private and SBP talking yeah. about the arrangements. Thank you very much. So, so let's uh, move forward. Let's move away a little bit from basketball. What do you miss about, uh, what do you miss here in the Philippines the most? Uh, I miss. 
I miss um the street foods, all the fish balls and <laughs> back back there. Yeah. Like after after class, me and my teammates we'd go out, we'd eat before uh yeah before before afternoon workout. Sometimes we eat there, and then just hanging around with my teammates and having fun. For sure, they miss you as well. Your te- teammates miss you as well, but no worries. If I can send you some fish balls there, I'd do so. so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And by the way, for my last few questions, um, since my channel is actually a lifestyle channel as well, what and sneakers are part of the basketball culture. What is your favorite all-time favorite sneaker? Um, it'd be a... Uh... Probably, I like the looks of Jordan ones. They they just look really nice. Like anyone, like all the the color just helps you. It just contrasts what you're wearing. It just pops up. Yep, it's not just a basketball shoe. It's also a casual shoe, all in one, right? So nothing yeah. beats the classic. And uh, for my last question, or can you please actually describe yourself in one word and why? It's tough. Uh, I'm a. I'm pretty. Uh, that's tough, really. Um, uh, I'm kind of. I I don't, I wouldn't say. Uh, I'd say mis- like mysterious a bit. Yeah. Thank you for uh, thank you for answering my beauty contest questions. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> um, and Kino. Before going to my yeah, before going to my last question, uh, Chola, since uh, you grew up in uh, Ireland, how you embrace your Filipino heritage there? Oh, there's so many Filipinos in Ireland. Like, uh, I've met, like, most of my best friends. They're Filipino. And, like, the church we went to is, like, a full Filipino church. And there's, like, 110, 120 of us there. And all my mom's friends, they're all, like, nurses in the Philippines, and they're all Filipinos. And we just, I just grew up with a lot of Filipinos there, too. So it wasn't really hard for me. There's the, uh, the culture. There. Yeah, go ahead, Tyler. The culture was already there, so. And uh, this is my last question to you. Uh, how do you see yourself five years from now? I'll see myself um, playing professionally. Uh, anywhere, just professionally. Uh, and I see myself helping my family out. Hopefully, them being here and just giving back to my, uh, give, just giving back to like FE, like the people who helped me, like FEU, like see if I could like help them out when I go there. Like probably something there. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Cholo Anunwebo. And uh, again, uh, we are honored for having you here and uh, of course Miss Patty I have a question to Miss Patty uh, Miss Patty can, ex- can we expect more Filipino basketball players in the East West private in the future well I absolutely hope so <laughs> we uh, every single day we love getting messages and inboxes from uh, both kids young men parents young women um, women. So we are always looking for um, anyone who wants to join the family, both uh, male or female. So um, we're excited actually uh, to be making an announcement here soon as well about a new addition that, um, you know, we're very excited about as well. So we're always looking for, for good family members to add to the mix that want to take their career to another level. Uh, Miss Patty, can you give us a clue? 
I cannot. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I believe we'll, we will just wait to announce my in your Instagram account. <laughs> yes. Yes, but when we have a press con, we'll invite. Make sure you guys are on that. How about that? I think that would be great. That will be lovely. <laughs> so for my uh, last question to to Cholo, Cholo and Webo, um, who do you think is the best Gila starting five? Oh, best Gila starting five. Hmm. I feel like. Probably, uh, I'm not sure if you're uh, updated that we have uh, Young Cadets uh, pool uh, now in Galambabal. So from those people, um, who do you think are the best starting five? Oh, from the bubble? Yep. Uh, I feel like I put RJ at the one. He's my guy. And I don't know if, is Kwame in the bubble? Yes, he is. Yeah. yeah, I'll put him at the center. Dwight Ramos is going to be there, right? Yeah, he's going to be a three. I feel like I'll put... I'll probably put Javi at the two because, you know, he can shoot He can shoot that. Who's going to be my four? Or is it is it safe to say to add Kai Soto <laughs> in the, the bubble? I'm not. Who's at the 20 pool? Um, Tamayo. Oh. Uh, I, I think, Tam- yeah, Tamayo is going to. Sorry. I feel like Tamayo might. Yeah. He's not going to give up. He's good. That's my five that, right there. Yeah, that's a strong lineup. And I think yeah, that will really compete on the PBA Shop qualifiers. And for me, Spati, uh, I have a question. Uh, we all know that many Phil Foreigner, Phil Foreigner are part of the East-West Private. And I believe that uh, most of them are in, in SBP radar. So how was the working relationship with the SBP in terms of the inclusion of these prospects? Especially Cholo. Oh, I, there's no question. I mean, we really value the relationship with the SBP. Uh, Tita Chow... Um, is on phone calls with them both morning and night. And um, we just really, um, we just can't thank them enough for um, always being um, open to anybody that we bring them from the States. And, you know, the families that reach out to us that are either Phil American or Phil Canadian or Phil Australian, whatever the case is, like, you know, we, they're our first phone call because our goal is to continue to build the national team. Like we want nothing more than that national team to just be, um, extremely competitive worldwide. And, um, for every, you know, Phil American or Australian or Canadian, um, to have the opportunity to play for their home country. So, um, cannot say enough things about the leadership at the SBP and um, what it means to us. And um, it's only going to continue to get even stronger than what it is now, which is exciting to think about, well, how can it get any more stronger than what it is now? But we have some really amazing projects that we're going to be working with them on as well. And um, we're just blessed and very humbled and beyond excited to work with the leadership there. It was so nice to hear that. And I think in this as private, we can already form a national team uh, with all the Filipinos you have on your staple. And I would just like to know, I'm just curious, um, what are the requirements to join East West Private? For example, I'm a basketball player and I want to join. What, are there any requirements for me to, to, to work with East West Private? Well, as I said, every conversation is different. Um, It's not just about skill. It's about, you know, heart and mental fortitude and, you know, what their goals are. Um, They don't have to necessarily have a goal to play pro. It could be that they just want to make sure that they get to a certain division level in college and or play internationally. So everybody's goal is different, right? And, And we don't judge 
based on, um, you know, them becoming pro, you know, we are very focused on helping everyone at any level reach their dream. Um, you know, that's why we're very excited about Kai establishing the Kaiju Academy at Spooky Nook. Um, that's really going to open up a lot of opportunity um, for partnerships between the SBP and um, currently right now Smart and, and Kai and really broadening um, so many opportunities for so many athletes, not just in basketball. Um, but in volleyball, badminton, I mean, I, I could name multiple sports, esports, and we just want to really help anyone who has the desire um, to really become not just a better man or woman, but um, really contribute back to their country. And, and that to us is what we're all about, like really helping them achieve their dreams and goals. And that is really nice. And uh, thank you very much, East West Private, for, and Miss Patty, uh, for helping our Filipinos achieving their dreams. And is there any plans that you will open a branch in, in the Philippines for those people who cannot go to the U.S.? Uh, actually, it's interesting you say that. Um, Tita Chow and I could definitely speak to that here very soon. Um, we actually are developing something that... Um, everybody there will be able to take advantage of. And we're very excited about that. So that's for a different phone call. Today's focused on show. Um, but honestly, I, I really have to give all the credit to um, Tita Chow. I mean, you know, we wouldn't, East West Private wouldn't be what it is today without her and um, her passion towards her country. Um, and her family and the leadership there and, you know, people she went to school with. And um, it's why I've become, um, you know, almost her sister and why we're both so passionate about it. But um, we always are focused on what we can do back there. Um, not just that's what that's what's a part of the East West, right? East is there. West is here. And we're constantly um, going to be going back and forth between both and establishing opportunities for everybody there as well as here. So um, want to make sure that even though she's not on this call, because she's actually on um, another call already in Manila. Um, that's, this is our high time right now and she's working on some projects. So again, she gives our best and, and thankful, you know, and gratitude to you highlighting Cho today. And we really appreciate your support. Thank you very much. And uh, Cholo, uh, she probably may message for you. Probably it's, it, it will be in Tagalog. <laughs> uh, good luck sa'yo, Cholo. And sana matupad mo lahat ng mga pangarap mo. And I hope talaga na uh, hindi lang si Kai yung mag mangarap na makapasok sa NBA. Uh, I, I hope you too yun talaga yung maging pangarap mo. And dream big lang. Thank you. And uh, before we actually end, uh, let me give my message to Cholo. I know, Miss Patty, having this conversation with you, we've learned that you are really building a family culture. So, Cholo, from your kuyas in the last two minutes podcast, we wish, wish you longevity in your career. That's the only thing that I can wish for since you already have the talent and the proper attitude to succeed in the basketball in basketball and uh, before we give the, uh, we will be giving the floor to you now to say kumusta and thank you sa mga fans mo dito sa Pinas and sa mga kaibigan mo as well uh thank you for supporting me always and just be ready to i'm a i'm a represent the country soon and i'm gonna see i'm gonna see what i can give back to you guys Thank you for supporting me. And uh, you already have, uh, we, we got your back in the last two minutes podcast. Anything that you would like to um, talk to, we, we, our lines are all open with that and we are all support with you. So Miss um, Patty, uh, thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. Uh, it's been, uh, if I can say, a life-changing experience for us uh, since we have an insight from you and from the EWP. And thank you, thank you so much. We are really honored and privileged. 
Well, thank you for loving your country and always supporting um, athletes worldwide. And um, feel free to always call us and highlight any athletes that you're aware of that want an opportunity. We will always be here to listen and we will always be here to, uh, you know, tell them um, the truth and not lead them in the wrong direction and do what we can to support the country. And again, ma'am, thank you. Thank you so much. So to our viewers, before we end our show, let me borrow some code from Miss Patty and Cholo. So basketball, it's not a just, just a sport. It's more than a game. Uh, it's uh, with family and the total character of a person. So you'll, with basketball, if you succeed, you'll be able to succeed in the game called life as well. So thank you so much to our viewers. Magandang hapon, magandang umaga, magandang gabi. Good evening, good morning, good evening sa inyong lahat. And thank you for watching our show. God bless.